Hey everyone, it's Kong again, and here's another holiday episode of Should You Summon? As always, I'll be presenting high-level overviews using these four criteria to help you decide whether this banner is worth your hard-earned vouchers and crystals, especially in the midst of Overlord crossover season and Rosen Seal coming up right around the corner. How they fit into your team, whether they unlock any bonds, what kind of content they get used for, and their future availability. I hope you'll forgive me for the short and quick episode, it's the holidays. So let's jump right into this Raid Up banner featuring Licorice and Akaya, running from December 24th to January 6th. And of course it's not a Destiny banner, so it's definitely possible to summon off-banner heroes even on your first SSR. Let's start with Licorice. Licorice is a blend of a support unit, a pseudo-healer, and an AoE caster. Whenever she casts an AoE skill, every tile within the span of the skill gets a Breath of Life effect for up to two turns at 6 star. When a friendly unit lands on one of these tiles, it heals them and dispels a debuff. She also has a one-cost transformation skill that reverses her terrain effect, instead causing damage and debuffs to enemies who land on the affected tiles. To help cover as much terrain as possible, she also has a large AoE 3 cost skill. It's a big 5 span burst centered on Licorice that heals allies within the zone and inflicts damage and debuffs on enemies, and it covers a great deal of the map with her Breath of Darkness effect. She's a member of Dark Reincarnation, buffed by Bozel and Licorice herself, Langrisser Reincarnation, buffed by Ares and the upcoming Hilda, and Princess Alliance, buffed by Luna and Shelfaniel. So, she has one of the faction buffs for Dark Reincarnation, and this one increases skill damage by 3% for each tick of cooldown that the skill has, up to a maximum of 20% for a skill with a cooldown of 7. Most big skills like Black Hole have a cooldown of 5, so you're usually going to be getting up to 15% bonus damage with this. For bonds, she unlocks the defensive bond for Renata and the attack bond for Florentia. For her own bonds, she needs Ares and Bozel. For content, in PvE she's on faction for Leviar in Eternal Temple and Needhog and Fenrir in Ancient Beckoning, and she should be useful enough for all three of them. Of course, as a long-range magical unit, she could also be put to good use against the Ice Dragon, and finally, when Langrisser Reincarnation gets added to Ancient Beckoning with the Hilda update, she'll be on faction for Sleipnir at that time. In PvP, she was great during the Season 5 debuff meta. Going forward, she'll still be good in Dark or AoE-focused teams, but there are counters like Rosen Seal coming out that'll curb her usefulness a bit. Still, it's always nice to have the option to have another faction buff in your box. For availability, she's not on the current schedule up until June. Okay, let's move on to Akka. Akka's talent summons a wolf spirit whenever an ally or an enemy dies. You can sacrifice this wolf to trigger one of her special skills, either giving all allies a two-turn buff that increases attack and int by 30% and mobility by two, or causing an AoE explosion that causes physical and magical damage and debuffs, or teleporting another character to the wolf's position and letting them act again. When she launched, she was a niche support character mostly useful in PvE, who could make the occasional big brain plays in PvP. Her unique weapon came to global servers last week, and it significantly increases her value for certain box compositions. Instead of waiting for someone to die, it lets you summon a wolf on the first turn simply by taking action. If your first action is Blood of the Sheikah, you'll immediately get a wolf that you can then sacrifice to use one of her other skills. For example, boosting the rest of your team's mobility, attack, and int, and of course this also has the side effect of buffing up someone like Reen on the first turn. She's a member of Legion of Glory, buffed by Ledin, Elwyn, and Grenier, Origins of Light, buffed by Dehart, Jugler, and Freya, and Mythical Realm, buffed by Gizaroth and the Sage of the Trees. For bonds, so far Akka's only needed to unlock the attack bond for Renata. Her own bonds aren't even locked behind other SSR characters, she only needs Matthew and Sophia. For content, in PvE, she's on faction for Scylla and Valkyrie in the Eternal Temple, and Jormungandr, Fenrir, and Hugin and Munin in Ancient Beckoning. She can also be useful for some of the more puzzly Time Trials maps where you can make some creative use of her wolf skills. 
In PvP, Akka can be used as a utility or support character for rush teams, or teams that make good use of her turn 1 wolf setup. For availability, like Licorice, she's not on the current schedule up to June. Now that's not to say that she will be showing up again in June, it's just that that's the latest that we have any information for. So it's guaranteed not before June, maybe sometime after June. Okay, so here's the quick and dirty. We have Licorice, who's a support and utility character with oppressive terrain effects. She has a faction buff for Dark Reincarnation, and she unlocks the defensive bond for Renata and the attack bond for Florentia. Then we have Akka, who's a flexible support character with a unique weapon that can help her set up specific PvP boxes, and she unlocks the attack bond for Renata. Now, just a reminder about upcoming banners. At some point after this banner, we should be getting a Destiny banner featuring Sigma, Claret, and Brenda. This is the last good chance to get Sigma before his SP Assassin class comes out in February, so that's something to consider. I'm not sure how the four week duration of the Overlord banner is going to affect the schedule of this one, so stay tuned and I guess we'll find out. We've also got the return of the Bozal, Liana, and Luna banner on the schedule, and then of course the next new characters coming in mid-January will be Rosenseal and Clotaire, from the second act of the Langrisser mobile story. Rosenseal in particular is a powerful counter to AoE and debuff teams, and represents the next major PvP meta shift. So she's someone you're going to want to have some tickets for if you play PvP at all. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you're summoning on this one, or if you're still diverting your vouchers to Overlord. Or saving them for Rosenseal. Let me know, I want to know. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Should You Summon. Happy Holidays everyone.